Hello again, this is the second video in my RuneScape private server starting off tutorials. This uh, video will contain a semi-good tutorial on how to make a working web client and downloadable client. And actually it's just a downloadable client, possibly a little bit of web client in there as well. But anyway, what you will need to make a working web client is Dropbox, which is just a small cloud storage thing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And all credit goes to Shabba56 on Rune Server because that's where I learned how to do this. And I'm just pretty much doing the same tutorial as he did, or she, not really sure, and just making it in voice and screen. So instead of screenshot and words. Okay, so anyway. Okay, one other thing that I forgot, I keep forgetting things because it's been so long since I've done this. But to make your web client work, uh, you will need to get to make a no IP account. So log on to www.noip.com, sign up, do the whole sign up thing, and then go to add a host. Okay, one other thing that I forgot, I keep forgetting things because it's been so long since I've done this. But to make your web client work, uh, you will need to get to make a no IP account. So log on to www.noip.com, sign up, do the whole sign up thing, and then go to add a host. Uh, actually, add a host, and then you do a host name, which is pretty much just like your server name, and then choose what thing you want, so zapdo.org, do DNA, DNS host A, uh, then you need to do this on your VPS, make sure you're doing this on the VPS or input your VPS IP instead, so it would just be like VPS IP, um, don't need to assign a group and just go update host, whatever, and then after you have done that, you will get this thing on manage host, then you just grab this uh, no IP IP, and then you need to go onto your VPS where your client is, and in your client folders, under source, scroll down or search until you find settings, which should be all the way down there. So I just search for it. Uh, so settings, open up settings, and then where it says server name. This will be the little logo up the top of the thing, so say I load this. And then it's, this will be what that says up there. So this is extension client 1.4, where that says extension client 1.4. And then your buttons, which are these things. Uh, the website is just that. And then it's all just a whole lot easier. Just do that. So the website is that link. Um, just ignore that. You can rename that if you want. I renamed it. Doesn't actually make that much of a difference. Um, anyway, <coughs> do all that, um, and then I think in loader, is it loader dot class? You need to add in the website and then your server's IP. So I'm assuming there'll be your no IP or the actual IP, the port ID and a whole load of other stuff. Okay, to start off, I'll be doing this on my VPS. VPS is pretty much a virtual private server, I think that's what it stands for, and it's pretty much just a remote computer that you run your server off. Okay, so, step one, download JarMaker. A link to the download will be in the description. Uh, you pretty much need the newest one. Um, I think there's an older one, which doesn't look quite like this, but you need to run the .jar, or exit, you I can't say that. Exe, exe Java file, whatever, and it'll open this. Don't run the bat. Or I think you can run the bat if you want, but don't do it. Okay, so output directory. This is where the output folder, like everything, where your final result of doing this will go. So you make a new folder on your desktop, call it web client, and then click that, go to desktop, and find web client open up. Okay, so it's blank at the moment because nothing is in there, so just go OK. And then you need to make, name your thing, so my RSPS is called extinction, so I'll call it extinction.jar. Uh, the input directory is what file you'll need. If you watched my previous video, you know I said you download. You need to download a client folder, 
as well. So in client, it will have settings bin, lib, source, or in anything else. I'm using the Zenith client because that's what I was based on. So just double click bin, and when it loads, just click OK. So don't only open it in bin. So it'll be desktop, client, folder, and then the bin folder inside the client folder. All right, cool. So click manifest te template, which I'm not even really sure what this does because I don't know Java code. And then the main class for 667 is loader, which is, and you make sure it's a capital L. If you do a low, lowercase l, it won't work. And then just click set manifest. One problem which I found with um, all the other YouTube videos about it, it was not based on 667, and it was called like player as the player class is the main thing, or client. That's for I think 512 revision and 312 as well. Three, three one. I don't know how you say it. Three twelve or something. Um, but anyway, after you have done that, you need to what's this. Uh, okay, my bad. My computer's pretty shitty. But anyway, you need to now. You can either create the jar now, but just go into the jar signer, which is what that other tutorial says. So then grab it. Then you have to find your jar signer. Okay. Okay. So, to find your jar signer, go to my computer. Whoops, that's the wrong one. My computer, uh, local to C, and your program file is 86, I think. If not, oh, it added it out. Java, yeah, it's not that one. Okay, so we'll go back to, comp you start a computer, local to C, and then program files, and then go into your Java, and then for 667s, I think you need JDK 1.6.037. Well, 1.6 pretty much, JDK 1.6. And then go into that, go into it, uh, and then go into the bin, and then you should have a file in there called JarSigner. So if you do that, just click OK. And then it's in there. OK, so you need to create a key store. I'm not even sure what a key store is, but you need to find the key tool, which is already in there, which to find that, you just go into uh, computer, look at this, program files, Java, and this time do JDK 1.7, and then into the bin, and there will be a file called uh, key tool, and yeah, click OK. OK, so output file, click that, and then go to your desktop where you made your web client folder, go in that, and then rename it key store, I think. If not, I will edit that out as well, let me just check. Yeah, yeah, rename it key store. Good job. Dot exe. Okay. And then this time, you don't really need to bother about all this stuff, but I'm sure if you want to get real professional, you should probably change it. But this stuff is all good. So then, key store alias, is, I think it's just the name, so just name it like extinction. Now, the public key is a six uh, minimum character key, so just be like one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, and then private key is just the same as the public key, I think, or just another six letters, but you need to remember these two keys, so don't just do it random. So go one, two, one, two, one, two, and then just go generate key store, and then yes. And then it will load, and it's done. Okay, and then to find your key store, click this, and then we're in our web client folder that we made on the desktop, and we just generated that key store too. Click the key store.exe that you just made. And then this is where you have to add in the whole thing that you just did, so the alias, extinction, and then your public and private key, which is 121212 for us, and then 121212. And then go back to your jar maker, and then create the jar. If this is ticked, uh, you can leave it ticked if you want, but all it does is just make a bat file, which I don't know, doesn't really do anything, just makes it another way of opening it up, so it might take a little while to load. Um, so it's loading. Okay, it's done. And then go to your jar signer and sign the jar. And then, yep. And it will load as well. Might take a little while depending on how fast your computer is. I'm on my VPS because, oh, by the way, if you're doing it, I should have said this in the start, but if you're doing it f for a client on a website, I mean, a client for a VPS to like run off a of VPS, then you'll need to jar it on the VPS, I think. I think it's just better or something. 
I'm not very good at this, but I'm just a big, basic noob. So after you've done that, go into your web client folder and you'll have extinction.jar. You can control copy and then go back to your home computer and control paste it. And then after this loads, uh, wait up. which will take a while. Okay, so to make the web client, you need to go into your Dropbox where you uploaded the thing. Do not click on that like I always do. Click share link and then close that. Right click that, copy link address, go into Notepad++ and down in line 174 on the stuff that I had done. Uh, I think it's in archive which you need to copy and paste your link at. So then save it and when you're done, um, you will get something like, so if we save as to the desktop, save as a web client, you should get something like this, and hopefully it works. Run this time, and then a certificate should pop up saying, do you want to allow connection to Dropbox to use the file, I think. I'm not really sure, I haven't done this in so long. But yeah, it's working. See, I think. Um, takes a lot longer when you have to connect to Dropbox though than if you have like a actual host. Yeah, like this. See, from H download dot Dropbox, which for much it has to download it. Click run and it will work. So good job. Uh, another thing to put this actually online, you need a web host. The one I used before I got HostGator was just like 000 web host, I think. Uh, yeah, it was. And then you create a new account, uh, upload it to the file manager, and then get the link to where that file manager is. So it'd be. Um, I should have had all this ready. But uh, it was. Look like properties. Um, so once you log into your web client thingy, uh, zero zero host whatever, um, you make make a domain and then click it, and it will open up this, and then copy the link address to your web client, which is in your file sharing thing, uh, which is in your file manager. So then, if you paste the link in, then that will load up and you are online. So, I don't know if I explained that very well, I'll go over it right now, I suppose. So that was the quick version. Say so once you have this, click home, sign up, do the whole sign up thing when you are logged in. Um, click, well, this is your home, I suppose. Go down to where it says, uh, no, not that one. File manager, right there, the little blue box. Um, log in to whatever the password is, which I forget. Uh, shit. Anyway, um, log in. So if you've done that, this is it. So you just need to upload to your main. I think it's in public HTML that you need to upload to. Yep. And then in there, click upload. And then uh, click that. Wait. Choose file. There, yeah, sorry, I haven't done this in so long. You can go down to the web web client you made. It's there. So then click this thing, which is upload, I think. And yeah. So then it should be in there. I'll just click it again just to be safe. Um, okay. So anyway, it should be in there. So then you can go to go up there. Uh, maybe not go. Oh man, I haven't done this in so long. Um, but after you've done that, um, I am so proud of this. 
go to your web host, I guess, and then do login, and then go IR, and then submit, and click your domain name, and then it's there. It should be. Yep, there it is. Webclient.html. So pretty much copy that link or click it and open it. And maybe you can just use that. Yeah, and then upload that and link it on your thing, whatever. Oh my god, this is so bad. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully that helped you. Okay. One major extreme thing you need to do is to edit these dot bats and dot cmds to actually work so right click them go edit and this will pop up echo off just means it doesn't say it in the little spreadsheet thingy i think anyway or it does say it i'm not sure anyway so ignore this this is just like finding where your java is but see here jdk 1.7 Depending on what JDK you use, you normally you need 1.7, like JDK 1.7. And so depending on where it is in your computer, so mine is in program files, then Java, and then JDK 1.7, then that is correct, which has already worked. If it is, say for example, by default when you download it, J uh, program files 86, J Java, JDK, and then I try run it, the system cannot find the path specified okay so it will not work so you need to make sure this is very correct and it lines up to the right JDK 7 so for example I'll show you with my computer <coughs> local disk program files Java JDK 1.7 04 whoops that's 09 so then that is the correct spot for the JDK 1.7 uh, if you go into program files 86 my Java wherever my Java is, Java, 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 JR, there is no JDK, only JRE, so it will not be able to find it, and you'll get errors, so go through all of them, and make sure they are all correct, and with the same thing, so go through, uh, go, hold up, sorry, should be more organized than this, so go through compiler, ignore that, and run, basically compiler and run, and edit them so they're all correct. This one, run, you need JRE7, not JDK. So like it says, do the correct one. Make the correct path, make sure it is. Same with on your VPS, make sure it's the correct path or else it will not load. Okay, good.